So we'll continue where we left off the previous time. But uh, just to recap, uh, we were discussing about similarity. And we say that a matrix A is similar to matrix B if there exists a non-singular matrix S such that B can be written as S inverse AS. This is an equivalence relation. So uh, which in turn means that the relationship is um, reflexive, symmetric and transitive. Reflexive meaning every matrix is similar to itself. And uh, if A is similar and transitive means, symmetric means if A is similar to B, then B is similar to A. And uh, transitive means that if uh, there's a triangular it holds, that is if C is similar to B and B is similar to A, then C is similar to A. We saw that uh, similar matrices have the same characteristic polynomial. And the corollary to this is that uh, if uh, two matrices are similar, then they have the same eigenvalues counting multiplicities. <clears throat> and uh, we also defined the notion of diagonalizability. And a matrix is diagonalizable if it is similar to a diagonal matrix. And uh, this similarity divides the space of all n cross n matrices into equivalence classes. And uh, if A is similar to a, di a diagonal matrix, then any other uh, matrix belonging to the same equivalence class is diagonalizable into the same diagonal matrix. And any matrix which is not in this uh, same equivalence class will not be diagonalizable into this particular diagonal ma matrix. And we saw that the condition for diagonalizability is that uh, it should have n linearly independent uh, eigenvectors. Um, and, uh, but we haven't discussed when a matrix will have n linearly independent eigenvectors. One, pot one, one such condition is that if A has n distinct eigenvalues, then A is diagonalizable. When it has n distinct eigenvalues, it will have lin n linearly independent eigenvectors and it will be diagonalizable. So one thing is that if you perturb a matrix by a small amount, the eigenvalues also get perturbed by a small amount. And we'll see that result uh, a little bit later. And so even if A is not diagonalizable, uh, you can always perturb it by a very small amount and obtain a matrix that is diagonalizable. We also define the notion of simultaneous diagonalizability which is possible if there exists a single matrix. So there's a common diagonalizing matrix S such that both S inverse AS and S inverse BS are diagonalized, are diagonal matrices. And one interesting property is that uh, uh, two matrices commute if and only if they are simultaneously diagonalizable. A and B commute, meaning that A times B is the same as B times A. the last time and at the end of the previous class we stated the following theorem which uh, says that uh, if you have two rectangular matrices a which is of size m by n and b which is of size n by m with m less than or equal to n meaning that a is a fat matrix and b is a tall matrix but because we have defined them as m by n and n by m it is possible to consider what happens to BA and AB. Both, both multiplications are uh, kosher, they're both possible. And these two matrices BA and AB have the same eigenvalues counting multiplicities, but the matrix BA, which is of size n by n, and it's a bigger matrix in size than uh, AB, which is of size m by m, the extra eigenvalues, BA has n minus m extra eigenvalues compared to AB and those extra n minus m eigenvalues will be equal to zero. So in other words, the, uh, the difference between the characteristic polynomial of BA and the char characteristic polynomial of AB is just this factor t to the n minus m. You can see that this has n minus m zeros equal to zero, t equal to zero. And further, if m equals n, that is both these matrices are square, and at least one of them is non-singular, then the two matrices AB and BA are similar. So clearly if M equals N, then they will have the same eigenvalues. But remember that having the same eigenvalues or having the same characteristic polynomial is not sufficient for two matrices to be similar to each other. But in this case, if uh, 
if if one of them is non singular then the two matrices are indeed similar to each other so let's see how to show this so this is a slightly clever proof um there may be other ways to show it but uh, but this way is uh, simple but nonetheless it is uh, uh, it's a clever proof um so the way it goes is you consider the following okay this times the matrix Okay, so consider this uh, product of these two matrices. Now, um, A B is of size m by m, and B is of size n by m. So basically, there are th this this zero here has um, uh, m rows. and n columns and this zero here has n rows and n columns so overall this matrix has a size m plus n by m plus n okay it's a square matrix and i'm multiplying it by this matrix im uh, a 0 in so basically since this is im this has m columns and since this is in this has n rows and so this matrix is also of size m plus n by m plus n so this matrix here is of size m by n so it has the same rows as this and the same number of columns as this identity matrix so if i multiply these matrices equal to uh, im times ab which is ab and uh, so this times this gives me aba and uh, this times this gives me b this times this gives me ba okay so once again this ab is of size m by m aba is of size m by n this b is of size n by m and this ba is of size n by n and so overall this matrix is also of size m plus n by m plus n as it should be same size as this okay similarly if i consider i m a 0 i n times the matrix 0 0 b b a what do i get i get ab i get b i get ba so this is the same as this so these two matrices are the same and so um and and further this block matrix here i am 0 this is a block upper triangular matrix in fact these two blocks are both diagonal and so this is actually an upper triangular matrix with ones on the diagonal all its eigen values are equal to 1 and so this matrix is non singular all its eigen values 
this, this is actually not required for the proof, but this is just a side observation. Um, since this matrix is non-singular and uh, these, these two products are coming out to be the same matrix, um, what we have is that if I consider, uh, if I pre-multiply this by the inverse of this matrix, right? Then I will get this matrix here. So that what I mean is, I am a zero i n inverse times a b zero b zero times i m a zero i n will be equal to this matrix here 0 0 b b a so basically what this means is that this matrix and this matrix are similar to each other and this matrix yes so what did you mean by block uh, when you said a block upper triangular matrix? So an upper triangular matrix is like this. Okay, all the elements above the main diagonal are non-zero and everything below the diagonal are zero. And a block upper triangular matrix consists of blocks which, uh, which go down like this and any, all these, uh, all the blocks have um, so let me let me erase here. So a matrix which you can divide into blocks. So there's a block here, a block here, a block here, and a block here. And if this block is always zero, you call such a matrix a block upper triangular matrix. Okay. It, okay. it is arbitrary. You can divide it in whichever way you like. But if you can divide it into blocks where everything below those blocks is zero, then you call it a block upper triangular matrix. Sir, individual blocks, they could be non-upper triangular, right? Correct, correct. But in this case, you see that the individual blocks on the diagonal are identity matrix. And uh, therefore, they are actually upper triangular. In fact, uh, they have ones on the diagonal. So this matrix contains only ones on the diagonal, and so it is non-singular. OK, so these two matrices are similar. They're both m by n. Uh, sorry, m plus 1, n cross m plus n, and they are similar. So basically, if I call this matrix um, say C1 and this matrix C2, they are similar to each other. And the eigenvalues of C1 is uh, now this is a block lower triangular matrix so and the size of this zero here was n cross n so the eigenvalues of c1 are the eigenvalues of a b plus n zeros Similarly, the eigenvalues of C2 is the eigenvalues of BA plus this matrix. And this matrix is of size, so this matrix B is of size N by M. So this matrix is of size M by M. OK, 
Okay, so it's the eigenvalues of BA plus M zeros. Thank you. Uh, so the eigenvalues of C1 are the eigenvalues of AB plus N zeros. Eigenvalues of C2 are the eigenvalues of BA plus M zeros. Um, and so this means that just comparing these two, uh, the eigenvalues of BA Um, so basically this n is greater than or equal to m. So the eigen the 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 eigenvalues of B A are the same as the eigen they have same eigenvalues, they are similar matrices. So we have that this is the eigenvalues of A B plus n minus m zeros. And uh, as a consequence the characteristic polynomial PBA of T is going to be T to the N minus M times PAB of T. Now, um, to close out the proof, if M equals N and say A is non-singular, then um, AB equals A times BA times A inverse, which means that AB is similar to BA. Okay, now um, Uh, so one one small remark before I uh, start discussing the next uh, thing is that um, how are the eigenvalues of A related to the eigenvalues of A transpose and the eigenvalues of A Hermitian? So eigenvalues of A transpose are uh, the same as eigenvalues of A counting multiplicities. Also, eigenvalues of A Hermitian are the complex conjugate of the eigenvalues of A counting multiplicities. Okay, so uh, so basically A and A transpose have the same eigenvalues. A and A Hermitian have the same eigenvalues except for the complex conjugate operation. So um, we'll just uh, see this very quickly. So if I consider determinant of Ti minus A transpose, okay, the solutions or the zeros of this equation are the eigenvalues of A transpose. And this is equal to determinant of Ti minus A transpose, which is equal to the transpose operation doesn't change the determinant Ti minus A. And so the basically Ti minus A and Sorry, A and A transpose have the same characteristic polynomials. And so they have the same polynomial, same eigenvalues.
Similarly, determinant of if I take T complex conjugate I minus A Hermitian, that is equal to determinant of T I minus A whole Hermitian. And when I take the Hermitian, every element gets <coughs> the uh, conjugate operation. So the determinant of this, uh, you can think of it as this transpose and then taking the complex conjugate. And determinant of this matrix transpose is the same as the determinant of this matrix. And the complex conjugate simply complex conjugates every element of the matrix. And so this is equal to determinant of Ti minus A whole complex conjugate. So this means that P A Hermitian of T complex conjugate is equal to P A of T. complex conjugate and so this means that if you find zeros of this and then you take its complex conjugate you will get the zeros of this matrix and so the eigenvalues of a and the eigenvalues of a Hermitian are related through the complex conjugate operation now uh, we know that if two matrices are similar then they'll have the same characteristic polynomial and the same eigenvalues counting multiplicities but what we've shown here is that a transpose and A have the same eigenvalues and the same characteristic polynomial counting multiplicities. Um, obviously, we cannot conclude from this that A is similar to A transpose. Okay, this is not, I mean, so if two matrices are similar, then they have this uh, same uh, eigenvalues. But if, they, if two matrices have the same eigenvalues, it does not mean that they are similar. So, do you think A and A transpose are similar to each other? In other words, if I give you any matrix A, will you be able to find an invertible S such that A transpose equals S inverse AS? What is your guess? Uh, sir, uh, A is similar to itself, so if you take a transpose of that... Uh... A transpose will be similar to A transpose. Oh, okay. So from that you cannot conclude that A is similar to A transpose. Sir, if we take transport in the definition uh, in the definition of similarity. Um, hmm. So, but the definition of similarity is that it says that they are similar if there exists an invertible S. So it goes to, I mean, if you take the transpose in that, it, it simply gives you the reflexive relation. That is, if it is true that A is similar to A transpose, it will just say that then it means that A transpose is similar to A. But it won't really give you a, a, a proof that A is similar to A transpose, right? Mm. So this is one of those results, which is, um, uh, you know, in matrix theory, which makes uh, this, this subject very intriguing. It turns out that A and A transpose are actually similar to each other. You will be given whatever A, you, you can find an invertible matrix such that A transpose equals S inverse AS. So they are actually similar to each other. But uh, to show that we have to use this, uh, um, uh, something called the Jordan canonical form, which we'll cover a little later in the course. And uh, But using that uh, form, we can show that A is actually similar to A transpose. That will come later. 